The law of the excluded middle, or LEM for short, says that a given well-formed logical statement is true or false. There's no hole in the middle. Put another way, given any logical statement P, P is true or not P is true. The law of the excluded middle accords with much of our everyday intuition. It's true that the world is flat, or it's false that the world is flat. In this case, the claim is false. The law of the excluded middle matches many of the kinds of reasoning that we automate. For example, when we reason with databases. It's true that Alan is an employee of Megacorp, or it's false that he is. To determine which, we query our human resources database. The law of the excluded middle also applies to mathematical claims. For example, consider the claim known as Fermat's last theorem. It's true or false. It turns out to be true. If we take the law of the excluded middle as a premise, it's a powerful tool for proving mathematical claims. Let's look at an example. We'll prove that there exist irrational numbers x and y, such that x to the y is rational. Let's start by letting x and y both be the square root of 2. Assume that we've already proved, it's straightforward to do that, that the square root of 2 is irrational. Now consider x to the y. Call that quantity z. By the law of the excluded middle, z is rational or not rational. If it's rational, we're done. We've raised an irrational number to an irrational power and derived a rational. If it's not rational, then we have another irrational number, namely z, the square root of 2 to the square root of 2, that we can use. So let's consider z to the y, which is simply this. We can do a bit of algebra and see that it's just 2, which is rational. So we again have two irrational numbers that prove the claim that two such numbers exist. Either the square root of 2 and the square root of 2 do, or the square root of 2 and the square root of 2 to the square root of 2 power do. We don't know which, but we don't need to know in order to have a proof. As it turns out, it's the second of these that proves the claim. 2 to the square root of 2 power isn't rational. But we didn't need to know that to write the proof. The law of the excluded middle is also the basis for proof by contradiction. To prove p, we simply prove that not p is false. That leaves p as the only alternative, and it must therefore be true. Alternatively, we can rule out p, leaving that not p must be true. For example, it's easy to use this technique to prove the theorem that we just exploited, namely that the square root of 2 is not rational. Let p be the claim that the square root of 2 is rational. We want to prove not p. So we assume p. We do some reasoning, omitted here, to derive a contradiction. Then, since p leads to a contradiction, it must be false. By the law of the excluded middle, not p is true. In Boolean logic, the law of the excluded middle is a tautology. Whatever value p has, p or not p is true. But what about predicate logic? Classical logic, since before Aristotle, accepts it as one of three fundamental postulates. But it's worth noting that there are logicians and mathematicians who don't. For example, constructivists wouldn't accept our proof that there exist an x and a y that satisfy our claim. For them, a proof of such a claim must exhibit either specific values or a procedure for finding such values. While the law of the excluded middle is a powerful proof tool, it's important to be careful to use it correctly. The law of the excluded middle says that for any logical statement p, p or not p is true. It doesn't say that p or some q that may seem like not p must be true. If q is not exactly not p, then it's possible that there are more than two alternatives. Failure to recognize that can lead to the logical error called false dichotomy. For example, suppose that p is the primality property. Then for any x, the law of the excluded middle tells us that x is prime or it isn't. But can we say that x must be prime or composite? Now the answer is no. Composite is almost, but not quite, equivalent to not prime. 
It is equivalent for integers greater than 1. But for example, the claim that 1 is prime or composite is false. It's neither.